guys, Jeff here, Rust Belt Fabrication. Uh, just doing a little update for you. Um, last probably, well, two weeks uh, I've been having trouble with my truck. I drive an 02 uh, Dodge 2500 with the 5.9, uh, 24 valve Cummins. And uh, I had a fast fuel system on it and it was pretty old. Like it was probably getting to be, I'm just guessing because the guy before me had it on there, but uh, probably upwards of five to, you know, maybe even seven years old. The thing was ancient. So <clears throat> living here in Canada, it just disintegrated over time. So I went ahead and uh, replaced it. And uh, as soon as I got that all, worked out uh, I went to leave the driveway and my power steering slash hydro boost quit so I had no brakes and no power steering um, I basically pulled it back in the driveway I was gonna make a video on diagnosing that kind of stuff for you but uh, I had no storage on my phone so I went ahead and pulled the pump off and uh, it's actually driven by this vacuum pump unit which goes into your timing case which some of you guys will know what I'm talking about <clears throat> and then this here is your power steering pump it slips in there and it's mated to another driver in there right and that drives your power steering unit so what I did to diagnose it I mean first off I checked made sure I had fluid in it and uh, while it was running I pulled the cap off I mean it wasn't even gurgling or doing nothing I could see the fluid then I <clears throat> took the line off um, your pressure line will usually be it's too dark for you to see but it'll be a line that's bolted in not not just slipped on with a clamp so I took that line off um, up a ways at the hydro boost unit and I had absolutely no pressure so no flow at all so I knew that pump was no good so I stripped it off um, I also this line here I couldn't get this line off it's an oil return line from your vacuum pump back to the block on the motor and uh, priced it out through Cummins and they wanted an arm and a leg and my unborn child so uh, I went ahead to the local hydraulic place that we have around here and uh, they fabbed up this little line for me so that's gonna work out good uh, nice little steel braided line gave me a new fitting so that was a hell of a lot cheaper than having the other one shipped or or buying it through Cummins so that worked out but uh, the video today is going to be about this 1960s mini mower I got. Um, I originally purchased the thing. It's uh, probably one of the best $75 I ever spent in my entire life. Um, Jeff found the ad on our local uh, buy and sell and uh, told me I should go look at it. So we went up one day after work and it was actually on my way home from work um, and uh, went and had a look at it. It originally didn't have these duels. Um, I fabbed up the duels. Uh, did a whole bunch of stuff to it. But it was all there. You know, all the original stuff was there. The original motor. Uh, which did run. I got it running. But it smoked like you wouldn't believe. And, you know, I... Fuck, the first time I made a homemade plow for it. And the first time I went to use the plow, it, I couldn't get it started. So that, that was enough of that. <clears throat> I went and got a Princess Auto motor. And uh, swapped that out. So, yeah, um, kind of go over some of the stuff I did here. Um, I had to redo the back axle. It was totally shot. Um, so it ended up just being three quarter keyed shaft. That's all it was. It's too dark for you guys to see. So I redid that and then I had to make, um, put the original rims on the outside here. Give it that cool patina look. Um, but the insides are our new rims that I got from Princess Auto. I had to make my own hubs because they weren't able to attach. They originally had a 5 8 inside diameter bearing pressed into the rim. So I pressed that out and welded a <clears throat> kind of one of those black sprocket drive hubs that you can get from Princess Auto. I slid that up with the diameter of the rim there, the little drive, and welded it on so that way I could attach those solid to the shaft um, you know there is no differential in this thing it's just a forward reverse tranny so you have you know a locked rear end so it doesn't turn the tightest but uh, it's it, it's literally based off a push mower with a seat and 
you know, <laughs> the steering wheel. Um, the front end was totally shot when I got it. <clears throat> Tons of play in it, and uh, it actually, it didn't even have pneumatic tires. It had the old style hard, hard rubber tires, so... Um, I peeled those off. I made my own spindles. Um, this whole assembly, I just took keyed shaft um, to make my king pin, and then I made these little grease fittings. Uh, it was okay because these were actually weren't too bad. It was the hub it, hub itself that was totally oblong, right? Tons of play. Replaced all that. I made this little, uh, I guess it'd be your spindle which is just shaft, and then I welded that lock collar on, welded it on the other side so it's solid, and then I just slipped these little pneumatic tires with, uh, we've got like I think a 5 8 bearing in there on that spindle, and the lock collar on the outside. Um, so that worked out great. <clears throat> the tie rods and all that were, were no good, so I just made my own Heim joint setup, uh, which is pretty cool. All the little Heims from Princess Auto you can get. Um, I had to get fine thread rod for these to make the actual rod and then there's himes under this this end too which you probably won't oh yeah you can see those it's not too dark um, so yeah that's that I had to make this little uh, I don't know what you'd call it pitman arm and then welded it to a shaft because the original shaft was worn out I don't know you might be able to see it through here Yeah, so anyway, I made, made my own new column, uh, so that was all new. Um, originally, too, I kind of lucked out. I was kind of kicking myself because Princess Auto had their version. You know, it was cheap as hell, like a hundred and something bucks for a new motor, six horse or six and a half. Um, but the original was a Briggs, and the carburetor and fuel tank were on this side right here, and the exhaust was on the clutch side over here um princess auto because they do get surplus stuff ended up having those briggs you know the newer version of that that briggs engine which had the carburetor on this side and exhaust on that side but i opted for the princess auto motor which was opposite carburetor over here and exhaust over here which i kind of kicked myself about but then i got thinking about it and <laughs> the guy who had originally had it had a piece of of sheet metal here because you can literally see how close that is to the air box I actually had to cut the bottom of the air box on this new motor for that clutch um, so rather than having hot air blowing on my clutch and my foot all the time my clutch pedal on my foot um, it'll blow blowing over here where it doesn't really matter and uh, if you're looking at this this is the assembly I made for my lever for my homemade plow um, so basically, it attaches there on the frame, like that. And there's two bolts up in here, one on the other side, up in there. And then this pillow block assembly with this shaft. So my lever goes up here to my hand, and then comes down from here this way out to my plow. I made this plow harness. Um, used all the factory you know I didn't want to drill any holes or weld to this so I used all factory bolt holes and and made that work so it's beefy enough for what this is I mean you wouldn't even believe the amount of snow this thing pushes for what it is um, the only thing I do regret is that I used 35 chain on the back and I definitely should have went for uh, maybe 40 or something like that because when you really get a load on it it's too too small of a link and it tends to skip so probably swap that out here when I do the mower deck <clears throat> which is why I'm making this video here so you guys could uh, you know take a look at what it involves you know classic rust belt fabrication um, doesn't just involve swapping the deck over it uh, actually involves fabricating the deck so um, you know what we got left here I mean being from the 60s I'm surprised this thing even remotely has anything left of the deck but <clears throat> so let this focus for a sec that's what we're dealing with 
this entire side here is gone. Um, you know, they've, they've put a piece of fucking, looks like a piece of an old tin roof or something, tin can. Fix that. I mean, uh, this part of here is gone. Uh, another massive chunk out there. The parts that are there are still quite solid. Um, it's pretty thick stuff. So I was gonna, I looked for quite a while on Kijiji and just at the end of driveways and stuff uh, for people throwing out an old lawnmower or not necessarily a lawnmower but one of those push mowers because this is, it's hard to get the scale of this thing but it is literally like this deck is the size of your you know average push mower so I was going to try and get an old one uh, cut it apart and that way I could you know have these nice um, nice bent edges and everything I was going to just mate it all up but I don't have a lot of patience uh, I do have ADD so I just went ahead and bought myself some sheet metal and uh, took some cardboard I had around here and, uh, last night and uh, started mocking up what I'm going to need. So I'll uh, set the camera up here. We'll get a better shot on it. And uh, yeah, we'll go through making this deck. Alright guys, uh, originally what I was going to do here was uh, what I was going to do is try my best to uh, follow the, con the contour here of this and uh, something like that there. That way I can get my edge here again and then I'm just going to cut a piece of sheet metal build this strip up to the chute. Um, I was going to overlap and, uh, you know, just cut the edge straight on this other side and weld the overlap. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do that now because I'm just thinking that there's going to be a lot of moisture, like pieces of rot like crazy. So I don't know if I really want the two overlapping pieces of steel here where there's going to be trapping a lot of moisture. So. I have to think about that for a minute. Um, so.
guys, um, it's pretty parent-plugs about that. It's, uh, you know, it's rotted over here, it's quite a bit, and they've, uh, it's just quite a bit thicker than sheet metal. Hopefully this still works. I mean, all it's going to do is, uh, maybe stop the rock, maybe last installer. Hopefully it works too.
right guys, I got this uh, piece in here pretty good, so I'm just going to clean it up here a little bit, the steel here, so we get a better look. Alright guys, so you got a little bit of an update and uh, we did some fab work on that little mower deck and uh, tomorrow I'll probably put that vacuum pump and power steering pump back in my truck so uh, get that going again and uh, well until the next one you can check us out on Instagram at Rust Belt Fabrication 
and uh, have a good night.